Hi, my name is Mark Frankel, and I had the incredible fortune to be able to study with Gary Chester from when I was 8 until 13. So that would have been 1982 to 1987, which is right up until we, uh, we unfortunately lost him. But uh, if you're wondering who I am and why I'm talking to you, don't worry. You're not supposed to know. I'm, I'm not a famous drummer. But uh, I do play a famous role in a show. I've been a blue man in the show Blue Man Group for the last 15 years. But when I think back to what I learned with Gary all those years ago, um, I, I, there's so much of it that I'm still applying today in my career with Blue Man and generally in my life. Um, first and foremost is time and, and the, the awareness of time. So, for instance, at the top of the show at Blue Man, there's a part where I'm playing on two drums and Blue Men are on either side of me pouring paint, sort of an intro to the character and an intro to the show. And so I'm playing drums, but I'm also having to give cues to the technical crew for, for different uh, lighting things that happen. I'm having to give cues to the other Blue Men about when to pour paint. I'm having to tell a story to the audience. I'm having to give a cue to the band when to start in. So there's a lot of people relying on what I'm playing and how I'm behaving. And so much of that is wrapped up in time. I have to play with a really solid sense of time, a command of time, so that my fellow performers can trust uh, where I'm at and, and know what to do, what they need to do. And, um, and, and also, you know, the, the, the awareness of time allows me to sort of put the drumming, not on the back burner, but, but really focus on what I'm supposed to be focus, focusing on, which is telling a story keeping my awareness up and out and to the audience and to my fellow performers. And um, without a really solid command of time, I can't do that. So much of that is it started really, I got deeply ingrained with my, my work with Gary Chester and, and, and thinking about time being super, super important. Uh, and another thing I wanted to mention as my, in my work with Gary that maybe isn't as present in The New Breed, uh, he mentions it, but it's really this, this notion of, of ego and, and checking it. You know, checking your ego at the door. I would not have gotten the Blue Man gig uh, if I had come in with a big ego. Because, yeah, I'm playing a famous character, but I'm not famous. It's not me that the audience is coming to see. It's the, it's the Blue Man show they're coming to see. And when you're playing in a band and when you're doing a session, they're not necessarily coming to see, uh, to see you play you know, your drum solo and to see you display your chops, unless they were going to see Buddy Rich or something. And so really what it's about is coming in and saying, what do, what do I have to do to contribute to this event uh, to this moment to, that, that's going to allow the audience to, to be carried away, that's going to make the other musicians feel good, that's going um, to make me feel good and me, me feel like I'm part of something uh, and, and in something and involved. And, and so much of that is straight from Gary and straight from the new breed. I mean, he, he did not uh, mince words about his feelings about people who came in with a big ego. And I know he told me stories directly about drummers that came to see him, to study with him, that were super famous and were very successful, but had massive egos, and he did not hesitate to, to take them down a notch. So that's something that, you know, when I teach students, and I, I tend to teach beginners and, and younger students who are just getting an intro to the drums, and um, I really focus on the idea of, you know, this is about honoring the instrument and honoring your, your role as a timekeeper, and this is not about you, you know? and. Um, and that's something that, that I think is valuable, not just as a drummer, but in life. If you didn't know Gary, and I did, I was so, again, so, so thankful to, to, ha to, to be able to say that I, I knew him. And I, I considered him like a, almost like a father figure, as, as almost all of his students did. I, I wanted to take a moment to tell you a, a, a couple quick stories. Um, when I first started studying with him, you know, um, you know the, the first time I came to him, you know, I walked into this, this studio and it was filled with cigarette smoke and he's there in like a I think it was like a like a velvet track suit you know and he looked like Charles Bronson and uh, he had dark glasses and it was super intimidating you know uh, but he was really really warm and really sweet um, definitely uh, didn't uh, want to BS you you know he was really straight talking and so he would look at you he'd evaluate you tell you where your weaknesses are you know I was only eight so I think he was hitting me with kid gloves you know I'm, I'm sure he was but he was um a really warm character. And um, I remember when we first started studying, when we first started working on, on drum set, after we moved, moved away from the pad, we were working on the Haskell Har method book at the pad. And then he was, you know, we, we would do half the lesson at the pad, half the lesson at the kit. And this is before the new breed was released. So the way it worked was, is he had the Haskell Har drum book and he had this photocopied kind of like stapled ditto that was written out um, systems. 
This, this was the very beginning of the new breed. So there'd be, you know, you'd play this system and then you'd read the melody from a certain page of the Haskell Har book. And that was uh, the new breed sort of coalescing into what it was eventually going to be. And um, I remember that he had gotten the, the deal to, to release the book and they were working on a cover photo. And uh, my mom was there and, and uh, my, um, you know, my mother was in the business as a Broadway actress. Uh, so there was some simpatico, I think, between my mother and Gary and they would trade stories and stuff. I remember Gary showing us some proofs of some pictures that might have been the cover photo for the new breed. And people might not know this, but one possible suggestion, one possible thing that was going to be the cover was this picture of, a, of a, his new um, maple Ludwig kit, the one that's actually on the cover, which is what I played on in his studio. Um, but it was, it was from the front instead of from the player perspective. And it had Gary's head in the bass drum, <laughs> like a, like a, like sort of like a pensive, like distant look. And, um, he's like, yeah, you know, I don't know about this one. And I think my mom was like, I, mm, no, uh, this is not the look. And he's like, yeah, I know it was silly, but what the heck? And I figured it, we, we'd take some creative chances. Uh, I can't believe to this day that, that Gary has, um, has become the legend he has, and that I was a part of his story ever so briefly. Thank you, Gary. Thank you for, for all that you did for me. And, um, you know, I'm convinced I would not be sitting in my own personal studio with this beautiful set of drums over my shoulder, talking uh, about drums and living this life if it wasn't for Gary. So I wanted to take you back to um, when I first studied with Gary. I was able to find this Trapper Keeper notebook and uh, check out that sweet, Mylar rock drum sticker. Um, but yeah, I, I found this Trapper Keeper and in here is, um, is the Haskell Har method book that Gary was using to teach me when I was really just studying on the pad more than the drum set. And so I think a lot of people when they think about Gary, they think about you know, his, his incredible innovations with drum set playing. Um, but he was really, you know, also uh, uh, um, deep into the, the rudiments and the beginnings of, uh, of how to become a great drummer. And so, like, for instance, I, I turn to this page and you can see a lot of Gary's notations. Um, and uh, uh, something I really want to point out here is, is where right at the top it says count everything. You know, so there's an example of where Gary, even in, in, on January 13th, 1983, uh, I was just a little kid, really focusing on time. You know, time being the, the most important thing. You know, and it's a simp these are simple exercises, but for a beginning drummer, you know, you got to go through it and you got to learn it. And um, I think it's obvious that what he was really focusing on is counting in time. So um, when I'm t teaching new students, and I'm talking very young beginning students, you know, we're getting into eight, uh, quarter notes and eighth notes. So I wanted to run down what was a lesson for me um, right here, page 15 of the Haskell Har book, um, and just go down these... Uh, these um these quarter notes and eighth notes at uh, uh 60 bpm and uh and i'm tapping with my right foot quarter notes to keep that time playing on the pad and i'm going to do the the bop counting that i used to do with gary where instead of counting one two three four i would just be marking time at the quarter note uh just say by saying bop so that's how i used to when we were working on the new breed that's how i used to count so um let's run that down
that's my daughter. <laughs> So now I wanted to show you the new breed book that Gary gave me uh, when it first came out. It eventually lost its cover, um, and it has some of his, uh, his writing in here for, for counting and stuff. But what I'd actually like to do is just to sort of um, explore the versatility of the new breed and, and Gary's teaching method. I wanted to go to one of the, one of the first systems. Um, let's, talk, let's look at system, uh, system two, which is um, right hand. In this case, I'll be using the X hat. That's straight from Gary. I got that when I was studying with him. Uh, right hand, 16th notes on the hi hat. Left hand, two and four on the snare. Uh, left foot, quarter notes on the hi hat. And then reading the melody with the right foot. And I'm going to begin counting uh, quarter notes as a bop. Um, but I thought for a fun variation, I'm going to read as a tribute to Gary, because this is how we used it. This is how we started it. I'm going to read the melody on the, on the page that I just played on the pad. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's going to be, um, you know, quarter notes and, uh, and eighth notes with the right foot. And, you know, this is just a way to sort of take, with a beginning student, take something that we're learning, uh, you know, on the pad, which is sort of in the abstract. You know, it's not, it's not you know, drumming per se. It's a, more of just an exercise. And then taking that and bringing it to the kit and, see, and seeing how those two worlds can start to uh, mesh together. So hey, thanks for watching. I wanted to talk about Katrina Chester, Gary's daughter. Um, I've known Katrina since I was a little kid. And when Gary died in 1987, Katrina really took on the responsibility of sort of caretaking uh, Gary's legacy. Which needs to be carried. Uh, people need to know, not just, they don't, they don't need to just take the new breed off the shelf and read it cover to cover and say they've done it. What they really need to know is who was Gary, what's he about, uh, what, what was he really trying to say? And that takes, um, that takes an oral tradition. That takes somebody telling you what Gary was about. And I really want to give a big, big shout out to, to Katrina for, for taking on that role and for being that, that voice that, that so desperately needs to be heard. She and I have had a lot of conversations over the years, you know, just swapping stories about her father, you know, my mentor. And it's been a, a really wonderful relationship in my life. And now she's created this space uh, for Gary's former students to get paired with new students like yourself, whether you're brand new to the drums or, or you're picking up the sticks after a long hiatus. Um, if you want to know more about the new breed and not just sort of pick up the book in a, in a music shop and, and sort of read it cover to cover and say you did it, but actually get into like the ethos 
and the heart of who Gary really was, you know, we can do that together. And uh, so Katrina has, has created this way that we can get connected. There's email at the end of this video and uh, reach out because space is limited. So reach out if you're interested and, and get in touch with Katrina and, and ultimately get in touch with me. Uh, so I look forward to hearing, hearing from you and uh, take care. Thanks a lot.